Hello again. We're going to start a new topic with this lecture, and it's going to continue for several lectures, and that topic is cryptography. Well, why cryptography? Uh, we said early on, by the way, that cryptography was not one of the goals of computer security. It's one of the mechanisms, but it's also a very important mechanism used for a lot of different things in cryptography, and so that's why we're going to spend some time talking about it. Uh, cryptography is a very rich, complex subject, and we're just going to scratch the surface in, in this series of lectures. What we'd like to ask are, what are the key concepts of cryptography? How is it used as a tool for security? And how effective is it in that regard? So often, what, when, when people first approach cryptography, they take a look at an encrypted message in the paper or something like that and try to figure out the answer. And so let's, let's take a look at that kind of a problem. Right. So um, this is an example from Edgar Allan Poe's famous story, The Gold Bug. A little bit of setting in the early 1800s. A fellow's walking down the, a beach in South Carolina, and he finds a piece of parchment in the sand. And on that parchment is two things, an encrypted message, which you see here, and also a drawing of what he takes to be a goat's head. And for some reason, he comes to the belief that this may be the encryption of directions to the treasure left there by the famous pirate Captain Kidd. Well, uh, when I present this to classes, I, I ask, well, how would you get started? And the first thing that classes typically do, some students in the classes typically do, is say, well, you count the characters in this, and the most likely character is going to be an E and, and that sort of thing. That's not a bad approach, but it's sort of jumping the gun. Why? Because that only works if the underlying language of this is English. And so maybe that's the first question you ought to ask. What is the underlying language? Um, and if it's Japanese or Swahili, that's just not going to work at all. But if it's Japanese or Swahili, I'm not going to have much luck anyway. But so let's figure out what kind of questions we might want to ask when presented with this sort of a problem. Well, first of all, what is the underlying language of, of the plain text? Um, well, one might guess that it's English. I mean, otherwise, the story wouldn't be very interesting. But are there any clues? OK, so um, the fellow that found this said, well, his clue was this little goat's head. He said, if this really is uh, a reference to Captain Kidd, then that has to be a pun, a kid, a goat's head, right? Um, but the problem is that that uh, pun only works in English. And so there are other languages that might have been prevalent in the Caribbean at that time, uh, French or uh, Italian, but the pun doesn't work there. And so it's probably English. OK, so what characteristics of the probable source text are relevant? Well, if it turns out that it is uh, directions to a treasure, maybe there are things like directional uh, words south, northwest, 12 paces, something like that. So if you can get those kind of clues about the content of the message, that might be helpful in decrypting it. What characteristics of the source language are relevant? Well, if we've decided that it's English, then that's where the fact that some letters in English are more common than others is going to come into play, right? And so what my students would have suggested is probably a good approach. Um, but that brings us to this thing. What is, the, what is the likely nature and complexity of the encryption algorithm? For example, if it's a modern encryption algorithm, AES or something like that, you're not going to get very far. But consider the context, right? It's a pirate doing this. And so it's probably a fairly simple algorithm, probably what we call a simple substitution algorithm, which means you take letters in the original plain text and replace them by other symbols uniformly throughout. And if that's the case, we can get a lot of leverage from you know, counting characters and things like that. But if it's not, you know, the, the opposite may be true. And finally, have any transformations or compressions been applied to the plain text? Well, we can't tell yet. But uh, surely not a modern encryption algorithm like Lempel Ziff has been applied. But maybe they've squeezed out spaces. Or maybe they've left out some letters. You know, those are the kind of things to consider. OK, what is cryptography about? And we'll come back to that kind of a question later on. But what is, what is cryptography about? Well, it's about 
hiding the content, the information content of a message in some systematic way. So in general, we take a plain text, that is the original unencrypted message, run it through some encryption algorithm, which is just a function applied to that text, and we get a cipher text, and that's the output of our algorithm. We may also have a key involved in this, and so I've, I've uh, depicted this graphically here for you. The um, decryption process is just the opposite of that. You take the plain text and a key and you generate the cipher text. So typically those, the encryption and the decryption are really the same algorithm. Uh, and the keys often are the same. And we'll talk about you know, some cases in which they're not the same in a bit. Okay, so we spent quite a bit of time talking about information theory. How does information theory relate to cryptography? Well, uh, we might ask the following kinds of questions. If you encrypt a message, what happened to the information content of the message? Hopefully it's preserved, because if it wasn't, the receiver couldn't extract the information content from the encrypted message. And so the point of cryptography is to hide the information content, but not to destroy it. In an attempt to decrypt a message is really to extract the information content from what is, uh, in effect, a systematically noisy channel. We talked about noisy channels a little bit. Um, if you have redundancy in the plain text that's reflected in the source text, and that's exactly what was happening when we looked at that pirate message, right? Uh, redundancy there may, may mean, you know, regularities about the number of E's, for example, that were in the, in the plain text. Uh, and if those are preserved in the source text, then the attacker can use those to get some leverage on decrypting the thing. And finally, we want to ask the question, and we'll address this a little further down the road, is a perfect encryption possible? Yeah, is a perfect encryption possible, i.e. one that's theoretically unbreakable? And we'll come back to that question. Okay, so what have we, what have we said in this lecture? Well, encryption is designed to uh, obscure the meaning of a text in some systematic way so that the receiver can retrieve that from the systematically noisy channel. Redundancy in, in the plain text, which is preserved in the cipher text, is the enemy of secure encryption because the attacker can utilize that to uh, get some leverage as far as figuring out what the key is or what the original message was. Thank you.